we go. Welcome back again. Uh, I'm going to introduce a technique that is, I've got a lot of techniques that are my favorite. This is really one of my favorites. Um, this is a technique that's commonly used in alpine climbing. You might use it in multi-pitch climbing if you've just done a short pitch of fourth class or if you're out with someone um, who doesn't feel comfortable soloing something that you feel comfortable soloing and you want to create a really quick belay without constructing anything. So a lot of times you might have trees at the top and this I find works most effectively on a tree but it could certainly work on a rock horn provided you make sure that rock horn is well attached to the mountain. So make sure you give that horn a good kick, check to make sure it has good attachment on all sides and it's not resting on anything that might allow it to slide off. So obviously I've got a living tree. I know the species of tree out here. This is a nice fir tree. It's much more than six inches in diameter here. It's about eight to, to 10 inches in diameter and it's in good soil. I'm not even at the top of a cliff, so it's probably well anchored. Um, so most of the time, you know, before I knew this technique, if I wanted to belay off this tree as a terrain belay without building an anchor, I would simply pass the rope around and I would use this side of the rope like so. And then if someone were to fall, I simply push my hand across and that increases the coefficient of friction as the rope runs over and around that tree and can prevent someone falling down on fourth class terrain or on slabby terrain. This would not be a good technique to use on steep fifth class terrain. It doesn't provide enough holding power. You'd want to actually build an anchor on the tree and belay off of it, whether using a munter hitch or an ATC in uh, auto blocking mode. But the trouble with belaying this direction is by the time the person arrives, you end up with this big loop around the tree and you have to pull all that back off and around. It's not that time consuming if you're just doing short pitches, but if you're doing a lot of short pitches, then it can add up. Okay, so instead, I'm gonna do this magic terrain belay where I pass the rope around the tree in the same way, keeping an eye on my load strand. I'm gonna put that load strand on top. Okay, so here is my climber strand or load strand, and I'm gonna pull out a bite that's probably about two feet long. And now, I'm going to grab the load strand, the backside of the load strand here, and grab this other strand that's below the load strand, okay? That's the one that's attached to me. And when I belay, I'm gonna pull on both of those strands, treating those two as one, okay? So climber comes in, produces slack, and I pull. And I continue to pull. In the event that the climber falls, I pull across in that direction and the same braking action occurs. Climber climbs, I continue to belay in using both of those strands. Okay, climber falls. Okay, so it works exactly the same way. It's a little visually confusing at first, so definitely a good idea to practice. Climber falls, comes across, but the nice thing is I can belay for quite a long pitch of fourth class climbing or very low angle fifth class slab climbing. And when that climber arrives at this stance, if I just drop the rope, there's nothing to pull back and around the tree. It's just that same bite. So try that out on the ground, find yourself a tree, play with it. And remember the application typically would be for short pitches of fourth class or low fifth class climbing where the forces aren't gonna be so great that the friction you have available is too little.